all good uh, so hello guys uh, and uh, welcome to this session and uh, it is uh, on aws control tower service and i'm your host for next 30 minutes and then uh, richard will take over from me uh, on another topic and i'm uh, a little background about myself uh, uh, I'm a cloud uh, professional having around 17 years of ID experience and I'm working in AWS space for almost uh, 10 years now, a decade. And it is quite a long when um, I have seen AWS has evolved and uh, uh, earlier in that time it is like uh, we were using EC2 uh, classic, uh, classic instances and deploying them on uh, uh, shared uh, network. So th that's the time uh, I'm working on AWS workloads uh, which is quite cool uh, and now how we are building our infrastructure and doing our deployments so AWS has done a really great job and uh, uh, a little about uh, the company uh, for uh, I work it's, we are uh, I work for source group and uh, we are uh, we help customers uh, to uh, in their cloud transformation journeys and uh, build their uh, develop, uh, DevOps uh, platforms and uh, in the uh, source group is in the market from quite a while now they, they they were established in 2010 and they are across the globe in various places like canada australia new zealand and us so that's about me and uh, let's move to the next slide uh, the agenda of this uh, session so it's been split into three parts uh, the first one is uh, the presentation where i'm going to take you uh, uh, what is uh, AWS Control Tower service and uh, why uh, we need uh, AWS Control Tower service in uh, today's world and uh, third, uh, third thing is some cool features about AWS Control Tower and uh, then I will do a quick uh, Control Tower demo where I will show how uh, powerful the guardrails are and uh, how they can detect a non-compliant resource in an, in an AWS environment. And then we will wrap up with the question and answer session. And uh, this. So, yeah, uh, let's move to the next slide. Uh, the first thing is uh, what is actually AWS Control Tower? So, AWS Control Tower is a service uh, which allows customers to set up and uh, uh, govern a multi account AWS environment. So, what is multi account? Uh, it is uh, where uh, you can. Uh, um, in multi-account environment, you have you can manage your workloads uh, uh, separately and isolate them from uh, each each other. So, like uh, you're running their uh, various uh, development environments in uh, in different uh, AWS accounts. And why we really need uh, these uh, AWS uh, sorry uh, control tower service is uh, because it helps us uh, orchestrate uh, the multi-account uh, uh, environment setup for us. And, um, and some of you already know about uh, uh, multi-account uh, benefits and some of you who don't know, uh, I can give a quick uh, 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 overview. Uh, uh, back in uh, like a decade back, I have seen uh, customers were uh, deploying their workloads in single AWS environment and uh, at times, initially it was good when uh, uh, when you have a smaller footprint uh, of AWS workloads, but when it starts, uh, your workload starts increasing, and then there was uh, there were a lot of complexities uh, with the managing your uh, 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 IAM access and uh, management, and uh, there were a lot of security uh, breaches, and uh, and then there is a, a, to reduce the uh, uh, to re uh, minimize the risk of the blast radius of any uh, any issue in the single account. That's where the concept of multi-account uh, came from there. Okay. And, uh, and that's where uh, we need uh, our uh, AWS Control Tower because it uh, helps us uh, setting up a Control Tower service in one single click and it will set up a, a well-architected uh, best practice uh, uh, multi-environment which has all the uh, capabilities uh, of a well-architect framework uh, uh, like uh, centralized uh, identity and access management with uh, services like uh, using uh, uh, AWS SSO and with centralized governance uh, uh, having a separate isolated account uh, for all of your cloud trail logs all of your cloud uh, your AWS config logs and um, 
And the third thing is uh, centralized account, account management uh, with AWS organization. Uh, where you can manage your uh, accounts uh, separately in, in, in an organization unit. And you can apply guardrails and security based on each uh, uh, organization unit level where you have multiple accounts like you have an organization unit for your dev environments, for your test environments, and then you can apply some, uh, compliance uh, on them. And that's where uh, the control tower helps us building the solution. So uh, some of the cool features uh, about the AWS control towers is uh, the, main, the four main features is the landing zone. So uh, as I said, the control tower orchestrates and uh, utilizes most of AWS uh, cloud services. So uh, it, de it deploys a multi-account, well-architect landing zone solution uh, for the customers. And uh, it, uh, it actually, in a landing zone solution, we have uh, like central, uh, centralized, uh, uh, centralized and identity and access management uh, service, uh, AWS SSO. And, uh, we have a multi-account environment uh, 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 or, uh, with AWS organization service and, uh, and it provides a central uh, governance uh, with the AWS cloud train and AWS config uh, pushing out the, all of uh, the logs in a uh, central security account in an S3 bucket. The other feature is uh, guardrails. So uh, AWS control tower provides uh, uh, two types of guardrails, preventive and detective guardrails. So preventive guardrails are uh, like enforced guardrails which uh, uh, restricts customers or users uh, to, uh, uh, and enforce policies. Uh, for an example, uh, if uh, some, uh, we can restrict access of our developers to uh, deploy their solution on, uh, in different regions, we can restrict them uh, to the uh, Sydney region. That's how we can apply those guardrails at the organization unit level. And there are the detective guardrails are like uh, which can detect and notify uh, the administration operation team, and uh, which can which is uh, uh, which can be applied with the help of AWS config services. So these are the two guardrails uh, 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 it provides. And third th third is account factory. So account factory is an uh, account vending machine, and uh, in uh, in it standardizes the provisioning of all our uh, accounts like. Uh, it, it has a template and we can create new accounts with a standard uh, approach like uh, setting up a default uh, VPC and uh, with all the uh, guardrails uh, we can uh, apply during the creation of an AWS account which is uh, completely compliant and uh, well architected. So, uh, and this is one of the feature and third one is uh, the fourth one is the, uh, the dashboard for continuous uh, observability for visibility so it gives all the information and uh, provides us all the uh, in, uh, site of uh, our AWS accounts, how our uh, 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 guardrails are applied across the accounts, which are uh, uh, which uh, resources are compliant uh, within the uh, within our services, and uh, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, your uh, single sign-on service uh, as uh, it will uh, provide you identity and access management, and it will it will give you a nice dashboard representation of those services. Yeah. So in the next slide, uh, I would like to talk about uh, what, uh, when we deploy a AWS control tower lending zone solution, it, uh, there are uh, three foundational uh, AWS accounts is set up for us. One is the management account from where we deploy uh, uh, our control tower solution and uh, it is the main host of all our centralized uh, services uh, like uh, AWS SSO, which provides us uh, central uh, uh, identity and access management. And uh, other is your AWS organizations, uh, which is your uh, providing you a multi-account uh, uh, management solution. And uh, then your uh, 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 third one is uh, your, uh, yeah, it is provide uh, your service catalog service, uh, which is basically for your account vending and enrolling new accounts uh, to the lending zone. So th this is the management account uh, operates all these services. Uh, second is uh, the uh, second, the foundational or the core account we have uh, in our lending zone solution is the log archive, which, which is basically uh, is a central uh, logging uh, account where all our uh, other uh, child accounts 
uh, sends their uh, aggregated logs, cloud, uh, AWS config logs and CloudTrail logs for, uh, for your uh, log auditing and better visibility. And to further extend uh, the solution, we can add our, EK, uh, our EKS cluster, uh, sorry, EC, our uh, ELK cluster for have uh, more visibility of uh, how our uh, uh, logs are, uh, 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 we can visualize them in real time and uh, any kind of uh, non-compliance we can easily find out. And the third account is, uh, which is a core account, uh, uh, audit account, which is created by the Lending Zone solution is your audit account. This account is created basically for your log, your security team and uh, for auditing purposes. So it has uh, uh, two roles as, uh, assigned to it. One is read only and one is administrator access. So uh, we can provide this for uh, uh, the auditing purpose of uh, all our AWS environments, uh, all of our AWS accounts. And uh, uh, from here, it, it is basically uh, uh, one of uh, it. It utilizes cross account roles uh, serve, uh, approach to have access to all AWS accounts. So, in the next slide, uh, we're going to talk talk about the AWS uh, Lending Zone uh, uh, architecture. And here, uh, as you uh, as I explained in my previous slide, uh, we have a master account, and in the master account, we have. Uh, AWS uh, organization and AWS single sign-on. So AWS organization is uh, 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 creates uh, two organization units, and uh, one is core and one is custom. In core, uh, it has our main core accounts, log archive and audit account. So log archive is ba basically for uh, our uh, uh, aggregated CloudTrail logs and AWS con config logs. And uh, in audit, we have uh, our uh, uh, in audit, we, uh, this is for our security teams to uh, have uh, any um, uh, access uh, so that they can access the, our all other AWS accounts uh, from there. And then there is a custom OU. Uh, it is like uh, we can add a, a more or more organization unit based on the customer's requirement, uh, like dev, dev organization unit, uh, fraud and uh, test organization unit based on the requirement. And we can add uh, multiple dev environments, test environments, and uh, and even based on the products, we can create organization units. And uh, other services, AWS Single Sign-On. Single Sign-On provides uh, identity and access management to all of our uh, AWS accounts. And uh, uh, like earlier, uh, when we had multi-account uh, uh, multi architecture, we had to manage uh, uh, users uh, in uh, in in each each and every account, which was like a com uh, complex and uh, difficult to hard to manage. When we have when any user left the organization, we have to remove his uh, identity across all the AWS accounts. But with the help of AWS SSO service, uh, we can just uh, uh, revoke his access from one single place. And to further improve the security or uh, enhance, uh, 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 customers can bring their own identity. Uh, like uh, Azure AD and or Okta, and they can integrate with the uh, AWS SSO service. So this is uh, 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 how AWS Lending Zone is set up in in, in a well architect uh, manner. Okay, and so next slide. In the next slide, uh, uh, this is the screenshot uh, from. Uh, one of the successful deployment of our AWS control tower solution for uh, one of our other lab environment. And when, uh, as I said, when we create a, uh, when we create a landing zone, it set up uh, two organization unit for us. One is core and one is custom. And uh, it created three, uh, three shared accounts. Uh, one is your uh, management account, which was already there. Uh, then your uh, logging account, then an audit account. And these are uh, for uh, these are your core accounts for uh, your security and log log activities, and then it creates an AWS SSO service uh, with a native cloud directory, with uh, which we can further improve uh, with uh, integrating with uh, uh, customer uh, our own identity providers like Azure AD, and then by default it uh, sets. Uh, uh, lending zone sets up uh, 20 preventive guardrails and two detective guardrails uh, uh, for, uh, to start with. And further, we can uh, improve uh, 
our uh, uh, governance and compliance by enabling more guardrails uh, to the uh, our AWS ecosystem. So now uh, let's uh, move to the, uh, uh, the, the each and every component of uh, our lending zone and control tower service. The guardrails. Uh, as I explained, uh, these guardrails are the pre-configured policies. Uh, uh, preventive guardrails are your uh, nothing but the service control policies applied at organization unit level. And uh, these are the enforced policies, and they are always compliant. Uh, uh, for example, uh, we can block, uh, like, uh, we can restrict access of uh, of the developers uh, to uh, to a specific region, and this can be done through the service control policies. So, if they can, they would like to try and spin up something in uh, uh, U.S. region, uh, it won't allow. So, these are the uh, your preventive guardrails. So, they prevent them to deploy any solution on a if if we are trying to uh, do in detective guardrails they are more of a uh, uh, your aws uh, it, it consumes your aws config service and they are more in uh, uh, detective and then we can add some remediations to it if we want otherwise we can set up some notifications in the uh, detective guardrails and uh, for example uh, like we will uh, uh, some of uh, a user, he is uh, he created an S3 bucket uh, without uh, encryption enabled. He is allowed to do that, but uh, our uh, system, the guardrail will detect it and it will notify the administration team and, he, uh, and then we can take proper actions or we can set up some remedi uh, uh, remediations so it will automatically apply uh, uh, the uh, your KMS encryption uh, based on the use case. Or we can, we, we can uh, add a remediation to delete the S3 bucket, which is non-compliant. So yeah, this is how the guardrails work in the, in the landing zone uh, uh, space. And some of the examples are like uh, uh, requiring uh, require MFA for a root user from the security perspective, so we can enforce uh, for all the root account, uh, for the all AWS accounts, uh, the root access should have MFA enabled. So that is that can be done. And uh, another example is like uh, disallow public read access to Amazon S3 bucket. So someone by mistake, if uh, has opened uh, access to S3 bucket, the uh, public access, so it will be picked. Uh, it is non-compliant uh, uh, based on the control tower uh, policy, and it will notify the admin team. Uh, it can and we can take uh, some remediation action on it. And yeah, another example is disallow internet connection uh, via remote desktop. So there are a lot of uh, examples uh, and feature uh, guardrails we can apply across our AWS environment. Uh, and this is the one of the cool capabilities of a lending zone solution for a multi-account environment. Okay, and there are a few more, uh, for example, and enable AWS CloudTrail integration with AWS CloudWatch, ensure encryption of Amazon EBS uh, volumes attached to EC2 instances, and this is something I will show you uh, in the demo, uh, that if we launch an EC2 instance uh, with, uh, with a non-encrypted EBS volume, it will be picked up by our detective guardrail, and it will notify us. Okay, and yeah, it will uh, pick up the drifts as well if we make any changes to the existing uh, AWS config rules, uh, which AWS Control Tower has built for us. Those are the default rules we uh, I'm talking about. And uh, next one is uh, automate compliant account provisioning. So yes, for account pro uh, uh, your uh, account provisioning, uh, 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 Control Tower provides. Uh, uh, vending machine solutions so we can enroll accounts based on a standard uh, template so it provides us the facility uh, to enroll uh, new accounts with a standard uh, approach like uh, uh, with a with the specific uh, uh, guardrails uh, standardized guardrails across all, all our AWS accounts and uh, we can uh, it has all the uh, network uh, network capabilities like uh, VPC. We can create a default VPC with the specific uh, CIDR range and uh, with uh, some uh, security groups, or oh, sorry, some uh, subnets we would like to create. So during the enrollment, 
uh, with a standard template, it creates uh, this solution for us. And uh, and yeah, it uh, enforced those guardrails, the baseline guardrails, which are provided by uh, AWS Control Tower. It automatically uh, applies to uh, the newly created AWS accounts. And it, uh, in the back end, it uses a service catalog service uh, to do these uh, activities. It, it has a, a product and we can create multiple products to launch this uh, accounts enrollment process. And then uh, centralized identity and access in uh, AWS lending zone space. So as I uh, explained uh, earlier that uh, AWS SSO is the service which is used to provide a centralized identity and access solution. So uh, with it, uh, uh, with a default setup, it comes with a, your default uh, directory and uh, with, the, with one user and some pre-configured uh, permission sets and uh, pre-configured groups. And uh, these are the, uh, nothing but the, your, uh, uh, your users, groups and uh, some IAM policies, uh, similar to IAM policies, uh, which we use. And what it, uh, it manages, AWS SSO, manage these board operations for us. And last not but the least, uh, this uh, uh, AWS Control Tower provides us the dashboard for, uh, for the visibility. This is how uh, the dashboard looks like. So it gives us uh, complete uh, visibility of uh, how many accounts uh, we have in our AWS uh, environment and uh, how many organizations they are in and uh, how many uh, guardrails we have applied and uh, also any non-compliant resources across all those AWS accounts and it will give us uh, the structure of the organization units and the non-compliant one and the compliant one and account visibility and uh, it will give us uh, uh, far more information about what lending zone version is installed uh, uh, in, at, at this stage, so this is how it gives us a complete visibility of, of, of from one single dashboard. And uh, the next slide is uh, how we can take, uh, uh, we can improve uh, our control tower solution, or we can further extend the capabilities of control tower. So the base control tower solution comes with uh, some. Uh, basic setup, but we would like if we would like to extend this solution, we can use uh, uh, AWS Control Tower lifecycle uh, event, and uh, there are very good solutions available in uh, uh, AWS space. Uh, I, I was using for for one of my customer is uh, custom, uh, customization pipeline, and uh, with with which we can enhance and improve uh, our solution further. Like uh, if we are enrolling any new account for a customer then we can add uh, more, uh, uh, more configurations like uh, deleting the default VPC during the account creation of, uh, uh, during the new account creation or uh, enabling the security hub service or enabling the guard duty service. So these things uh, uh, further we can add to the control tower solution. And how it actually works is, as soon as we enroll a new account, uh, it, has been, uh, uh, it has been recorded in our CloudFail logs and which we can, uh, uh, with the help of uh, Event Bridge or uh, CloudWatch uh, Event Bridge, we can uh, set up some automation to pick that event, uh, uh, CloudFail event, and we can set up some Lambda function and some automation in place which can do more activities uh, when we are enrolling and improve our uh, uh, foundation of our enrolling a new account uh, baseline. Okay. And uh, I would like to summarize all the key features uh, what we discussed so far. Uh, so first one is like uh, it provides us an automated lending zone with all the best practices blueprints uh, like uh, AWS SSO for uh, your identity and access management, AWS organization uh, for multi-account management, and uh, then your uh, AWS service catalog service provides you account factory or a vending machine to enrolling a new account with uh, uh, proper guardrails and governance in place. 
and uh, 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 and your uh, security it improves your uh, applies your security feature with uh, having core accounts like uh, or log, uh, logging account and audit accounts where it has all the uh, aggregated uh, uh, logs of your cloud train and AWS config service and it provides you guardrails uh, for uh, for your policy management they are, they are like preventive and detective guardrails uh, it comes up with and uh, then we can further with the uh, we can further extend this solution uh, with our customization pipeline and with the life cycle events of uh, uh, AWS control tower account factory is the vending machine is one of the teacher and dashboard uh, is for the complete visibility of whole AWS uh, account environment and built-in identity and access management with AWS SSO service and pre-configured log archive and audit access to the accounts which is your uh, central log auditing uh, lo uh, logging account where we have our uh, AWS uh, config service logs and AWS cloud logs and uh, yeah, built-in monitoring and notification uh, through the dashboard and with the CloudWatch and SNS service and automatic up, uh, updates of your uh, lending zone solution. So this is a whole uh, how uh, powerful AWS Control Tower is, and it, it is very uh, it is advisable by a, uh, AWS when even if it, your footprint is small, it is uh, it is good to have your a, AWS Control Tower in place. To set up a secure govern environment, uh, AWS environment. So when you scale up, so all your uh, well uh, well architected best practices will be applied to your new uh, enrolled accounts, and it is easy to manage going forward. So now wrapping up with the the presentation, I've uh, I'll move to the demo quickly. So in the, in this demo, uh, I'm gonna cover uh, one of the uh, in. Uh, one of the guardrails uh, I'm going to enable in uh, for uh, at the organization unit level, and uh, there, uh, uh, and then we uh, we will make sure uh, that we're going to create a non-compliant resource in uh, uh, one of the AWS accounts, and then it will be picked up by our uh, dashboard and guardrails. Okay, so I'm on the uh, my management account. Oh, sorry. How can, how I can get the Wi-Fi here? So. If it doesn't work, I'll hotspot you. If it works, I'll send it over. So, demo runs, going to have some challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So pre-recorded. And how I can uh, share uh, my screen now. So if you go back to your PowerPoint and escape out of it, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So now, yep, yeah, all good. Now I'm on the dashboard uh, of my management account. And uh, I am select a region. <laughs> so, I have, so I have created uh, this control tower uh, solution uh, a day before uh, for the demo and so as you can see it has uh, the, uh, this dashboard has the complete visibility of uh, all of our environments and uh, this tab talks about the organization units so the, it comes with a base uh, organization unit uh, sandbox and security and uh, Security organization unit hosts our uh, two core AWS accounts, which are uh, audit and log archive accounts. So these are created by default uh, during the uh, uh, lending zone solution setup. And then it uh, it will gives us a visibility of all our uh, all AWS accounts in our uh, AWS environment. And uh, account factory is for enrolling a new account. So this is the standard. Uh, uh, this provides a standardization uh, enrollment of all new accounts. So as as we launch, 
uh, it will create a uh, default VPC for us and we can provide a CIDR block so it manages a standardized approach uh, for account creation. And these are the guardrails, uh, and some of them, uh, there are three different categories, mandatory, elective, uh, and uh, recommended ones. And uh, some of them are already enabled, like 20 of them and uh, 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 guardrails are already enabled uh, during the setup. And now, we're going to enable one of the guardrail. Uh, detect whether encryption is enabled for Amazon EBC, EBS volume attached to EC2 instance. So this is I'm going to enable now and uh, it will ask us for which organization unit I would like to enable it. So I'll pick security because that's the, um, that's the place I have my core accounts at the moment. I don't have any other accounts. So I'm going to enable a guardrail there. I, in the back end what it is doing is it is setting up a AWS uh, config rule uh, based on uh, the guardrail we have provided. So now it will be applied to both the AWS accounts your, uh, which sits under your security organization unit, which is log archive and audit. So I'm going to switch to uh, uh, our audit account where I'm going to create a non-compliant resource. Let's go to the audit account. And meanwhile, I would like to show you uh, AWS config service if it has been, uh, this guardrail has been applied to this audit account. So if we go rules. So you can see there is public write pro prohibited, AWS control tower, bucket public read prohibited. So it, the new guardrail has not been applied yet, so it must be in the process of deploying that. It's enabling the selected guardrail on the organization unit. And it is using CloudFormation, uh, uh, CloudFormation config uh, sets to deploy this on your audit account. And I can show you that as well. Cloud formation. So Control Tower is utilizing all of the AWS uh, uh, base services to uh, deploy this, uh, develop, uh, deploy the solution. If you can see here. Did I apply that or saved? Trail, cloud formation, which is free, stack sets, so yeah, cloud formation, stack sets. So let's see if our encryption one is here. Encryption, guardrail, encrypted volume. So this is the one has been applied to our organization unit. If we go here, it will tell us to what accounts it has been applied. ID. So it is giving us two AWS accounts, which are our audit and uh, uh, logging account. So it's current. So if I switch here to my audit account, I should be able to see the new rule. Sorry, I was checking the aggregators, but yeah, I should have seen it here. So this is the new AWS config rule has been applied uh, to our, uh, at organization unit level, and, uh, and un whatever account sits under uh, that organization unit picks up uh, that guardrail or uh, config rule. So now I'm gonna quickly create an EC2 instance with the unencrypted volume, and then it will be picked up by our test. Launch an EC2 instance, EMI. How does that alert you? So yeah, uh, I have my email set up. Oh yeah. So here it will it will alert me and it will show us in the dashboard as okay. well. Okay, and six 
it's default bit, that's fine. Let's keep everything default. Make sure we don't check uh, the encrypted. So yeah, storage, free tier. I don't want to go advanced. So summary, AMI, launch instance. Create a new pair. Well, let's proceed without the key pair. Instances, volume free tier. This is required for VPC security rules, so I don't have a default VPC here. And that will take some time to create a default VPC. Sorry guys. Do we have a VPC? I think I have to have create a VPC before uh, and it will take some time uh, to create a VPC uh, to set up for this. Uh, but meanwhile if you have any questions uh, for me I'm more than happy to answer. So I'm Account factory for the core accounts. Uh, so I'll go and check the VPC. Your VPCs. Probably not. Secure. Yeah, not for the these oh, core the accounts. Account. Yeah, these are the security oh. accounts where I'm launching. Uh, so yeah, I have to create a new VPC just to make sure. VPC subnets extra. Uh, VPC only. Default create VPC. Ten dollars zero slash twenty four. Okay, that was quick. I can do the subnet. Let's go back here and uh, instances. Oh, okay, you need a subnet. Yeah. Successfully created. Sorry. Okay. 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 The VPC. On the left, under your VPC. Okay. Create a subnet. Yeah. Let's create one single subnet. Yeah. So yeah, meanwhile uh, it is doing some work, uh, it will take like 5 minutes uh, to show up in the dashboard because at this stage uh, there are no, um, if we go on the dashboard there's, uh, there are no uncompliant resources but as after 10 minutes it will pick up that AWS config rule and it will report it to our uh, centralized uh, control tower uh, dashboard. So yeah. Meanwhile, if you, yeah, we can have any question and answer sessions. 
so the config rules that the um, gatherers create, are they charged? Yes, yes. Config rules have uh, it's a cost associated with it. Uh, each config rule, yeah, has some pricing. So more config rules, yeah, more pricing. And yeah, I think so. Yeah. So these guardrails that you're putting in, you're saying it takes it takes ten minutes thereabouts to show up in the yeah, in dashboard, the but that doesn't mean that it takes ten minutes to recognise a uh, uncompliant. Yeah, you do a scan uh, on, on all of the AWS resources in the AWS account uh, uh, where the uh, rule has been applied and then uh, it picks that event and then it reports to the uh, cl uh, cloud control tower. So the actual figuring out whether it's compliant is, is instantaneous, it's just a time, there's a bit of time before it shows up in the dashboard. It yes, it takes some time to show in the dashboard. So and you yeah. can create lots of VPCs before the guardrails get a win, get a What's going on. Yes. So as soon as it is picked by AWS uh, Config Service, it will uh, it will populate to our controlled centralized uh, control tower dashboard. So let's go to the Config Service here and see if it is reporting any known compliance. So here we can see. We are uh, we are looking into the uh, AWS account itself, so it is showing non-compliant in the AWS account. Cool. But in the centralized dashboard, let's see how it is if it has picked up yet. Dashboard guardrails. Accounts. Still, state is enrolled and there's no non compliance here. Enable cartels, non compliant resources. So, till now, uh, there is nothing on the control tower, but it has been picked by uh, AWS Config Service in the account, and now it will report to uh, the central audit uh, account, and then from there, it will show up uh, into our sorry in the logging account then it will show up into our control tower uh, dashboard and i should uh, receive an email as well that uh, one of our resource has gone non-compliant in a specific organization unit so yeah we can wait for for some time and uh, we can have some answer question and answer session so those guardrails are all out of the box yes these are the all out of the box but with the help of uh, uh, control to our life cycle events, we can add more guard rates uh, to the solution. But can you actually make one of them mandatory in config editor? Yeah, that's, that's what I did. Uh, there are some mandatory ones and uh, which are already applied uh, from the control tower solu uh, solution deployment. And some of them are highly recommended one, which is what we have enabled just now. So those highly recommended one. And uh, once we enable them, it, uh, and then we pick which organization unit we would like to apply that guardrail. So it has applied to, uh, that to each account under that organization unit. And there are some elective ones uh, we, if we want to, based on uh, uh, the customer uh, use case, how, uh, how they would like to apply uh, these security and governance in their current, uh, current environments. So, so what we're doing with guardrails is if we have we have worldwide accounts and we have a regional restriction and we've created a guardrail for that so it's known to be APAC um, regions that you can use. And then you, you create a guardrail a guardrail rules for that and then you put it, we've got regional based on use so then we put that rule that needs to be on you. So if you need to count that to that And yeah, now our dashboard is showing us our security AWS account is non-compliant. Uh, based on the uh, policy uh, guardrail we have applied. So uh, that's all an email for... as well? I'm not email yet. Oh, yeah, I should receive an email. I don't know why. So 
hang on. Here it only shows that it's non compliant. It's not telling what's non compliant. Yeah, if we go down, well, if we go down, which policy is non compliant, let's go to a security account and then it will tell us the resource, uh, right. yeah. the volume. This volume uh, is not yeah. encrypted. So, and then we can take some remediation action uh, based on this. Alert. So, yeah, I'll check uh, maybe the email. I have assi assigned to uh, the audit account is not set up correctly, but yeah, it should show up in our uh, in, in, yeah, in our main accounts, in our email account. So yeah, that's it from the demo. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for that. It's really good. Talk, talk. Um,